the end of the round and I just moved my stitch marker up so that you can see it a little easier so you can see I'm coming to the end and I have done one two three four five six seven rounds of half double crochet I'll measure that for you you can do whatever amount that you want but this measures approximately three inches three inches or about 17 18 centimeters and to finish off what we're going to do is we've, we have been doing the half double crochet stitch so we want to do a single crochet stitch into the next one and then slip stitch into the next stitch we're going to start with a magic ring. I did try this with the chain four or chain three and join and it did not look right at all. So I'm going to do a magic ring. So just grab hold of that loop. Oops, make sure it doesn't fall apart. Put your crochet hook into the middle and pull through the yarn and work a chain. You can now let go of that loop and it won't fall apart. Well, it will if you pull it, but <laughs> if it's just like that, it won't. We're going to do a chain one to start us off and we're going to work into the middle of the ring. We're going to work six half double crochets. So we've got six stitches, we're going to pull on our strand and that will cinch up that loop. When you've got the chain stitches and join it, it doesn't cinch up as nice and it looks really odd. I'm going to chain one and we're going to turn our work and we're going to work two half double crochet in each stitch around. So we're going to start in there. We should have 12 stitches. Got 10, so I've got one more, uh, two more left. Make sure you've got 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. We're going to chain one, we're going to turn our work, we're going to yarn over and we're going to work one half double crochet into that first stitch and we're going to work two half double crochets into the next one. And that is our repeat into the next stitch. We're going to work one half double crochet into the next stitch. We're going to work two. Into the next stitch we're going to work one half double crochet. Into the next stitch we're going to work two. We're going to repeat this across. And we should end on an increase. So there's actually a stitch here. This is the third time I've filmed this. Because <laughs> I could not figure out my stitch count. So we're going to end with two into the same stitch. I'm just going to count my stitches. And you should have 18 stitches. And I do. 
third time lucky as they say. Oh, and one of the times I wasn't even recording. I was just talking to a non-recording camera. <laughs> uh, chain one and turn. And we wanted to start with one half double crochet in the first stitch, one half double crochet in the next stitch, and two half double crochets in the next. And that is the repeat for this row. So it's one half double crochet in the next two stitches and two half double crochets in the next. So it's one, one and then two. So one half double crochet in the next, one in the next and two in the next. With a bit of luck we should end on an increase if I can count correctly. So we're going to have three stitches left, one, two, and the third one is on the end here and it's really hard to, to see. That's why my stinch count was going out before. It's here on the end. But these two here are really easy to see. They've got like that little um like a hole, like a divot. So you know that's a stitch, but this one it's got nothing. So into the next stitch we're going to do one, into the next one is one, into the last stitch is two half double crochets. And if we didn't end on an increase we know we've done something wrong. I'm just grabbing some yarn because it's getting stuck. Story of my life. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm just going to check and pop that. I'm lining up the middle here with the yarns coming out to the middle of the base. And you can see that that is big enough. I just, I actually don't think that is going to be big enough because it's flared out a little more. See, this is my thought process when I'm designing. Okay, so if we look at that, that does not look the same width. Let's do one more round of increasing. So if you're looking at your base and you've done a different amount of, than me, we're going to do one extra round that we did on the base. So let's go. Chain one and turn. And this time we're going to work one half double crochet in the next three stitches. So that was our first. Two and then three. In the next stitch we're going to work two half double crochets. Into the next three stitches we are going to work a half double crochet. And into the next stitch we are going to work two half double crochets. You can't see this but there's a chunk of yarn making its way <laughs> towards my crochet. One half double crochet in the next three stitches and two in the next. One in the next three stitches and two in the next. 17, no hang on, 19 years of crochet and I'm still having yarn problems. Does it ever go away? <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you've been crocheting longer. Does, do you, are you still having yarn problems? And then two in the next. So we should have four stitches left. So one, two, three. And our fourth one is on the end hiding as usual. So one, one in that one, one in the next one, and then two in that last stitch. Make sure you get under two loops. <coughs> we are going to crochet along there to make that 
beautiful. Now we're going to just do no increasing at all. So it's just a chain one and turn and half double crochet in every stitch across. And you know what I am going to do for this? I am going to put a stitch marker in that last stitch of that row because I'm not talking to you guys. You're not being my little crochet buddies. When I'm off camera, I'm going to forget that last stitch. Because I'll be not paying attention and watching YouTube or something. So it's just one half double crochet in each stitch across. And the hood section, you can pretty much do as many rounds as you want. Here we go again. It's not a round on this part. It's a row. So you can do as many rows as you like. Um, I cannot remember how many I did on the other one. But after I finish this, which will literally be, a, you know, a second in YouTube world, you'll see how many rows I've done and we can see if that looks good or not. Because if you do too many, it looks too high and it looks, looks out of proportion. So I'm just going to go to the end and then I'm going to pause the video. So we're coming up to that last stitch there. We don't want to forget. If we do forget to do that one, it's going to have this really odd angle on one side. Actually on both sides because it'll be... The same on this end because we've got to spin it around not forget the little stitch on the end so keep going and that looks great this is what your hoods are going to look like <laughs> no it isn't you're going to start creating the sides so keep going and then we are going to learn how to join it in the next part looks so cool can't wait till it's finished I have finished mine. I've got a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 rows. And that is... Did we do 5 increased rounds? I can't, rows, I can't remember. 1, 2, 3, 4... Yeah, 5 increased rounds and 5 non-increased rounds. My yarn is still attached. You could have a different amount of rows. That's perfectly fine. We are now going to crochet around the opening of the hood and we're going to crochet along the ends of our work here. Going to chain one and work to work on the end. We're just going to work our way along putting I think one half double crochet at the end of each row. I think that's going to be what we need to do. Because we don't have any exact spot to go. So there's a big hole. That looks silly. We don't have an exact spot to go. So I just want to make sure it looks even. There's big holes, but I think it might make it too roughly if I do too many. I want to try and get two loops. This could be a bit of um, suck and see. <laughs> you just want to make sure it lays flat. It looks neat. Trial and error. That is what I was trying to think of the word. Of the saying, not the word. I think suck it and see might be an Australian version. <laughs> so we're just going along. Just spacing it out even so there's no massive holes. And it also doesn't ruffle. 
and I think I mentioned before I've been crocheting for 19 years. I know I did, but I don't know if I've edited that out because I was having problems. And I still have troubles with the ends, crocheting into the ends. Sometimes it's too tight, sometimes it's roughly. Yeah, all the things. Crochet over that. See, look, there's another big hole. We don't want that. I'm just going to leave this going, the video going, so you can see what I'm doing. I want to be under two loops though. Sometimes it's not possible for where you want to put your stitch. The trick is not to pull up really hard on these stitches. Like when you put your crochet hook in, don't pull your crochet hook really far. And that'll stop it from gaping if you can only find one loop to go under. And there's no set amount of stitches across here, it's just if you make it look good, then that's what works. The trick is to get it as close to, to the edge of this section as you can, like as close as you can to the edge. And that's what will make it look neat rid of that stitch marker that was just reminding me where the last stitch was that we were using before and just one in that last one there and don't cut your yarn off yet have a look see what it looks like I think that looks really good and I'm just going to crochet back across to just neaten off that last row so chain one turn your work around and half double crochet across this one will be easy because we do have a stitch to go into we can cut this little thing off there and just crochet all the way across. And the next part is we are going to join. That looks so cool. Hee -hee. So excited. All right, so grab our base. And then grab our hood and what we want to do is we want to find the middle so we're just going to fold this we've got the so this is the top of the hood and we're going to fold it like that so what we're going to do is we want to find the center point grab a stitch marker it's just easier to remember pop it in where the center point is. You can count your stitches, I'm not going to bother. And we're going to grab our hood. This is where I finished off. You can see the yarn still attached. And we're just going to fold it in. And where it creases there, that's the center point. Again, you can count your stitches. Again, I'm not going to bother. And we can just open that up. So let's have a look at this. I'm going to grab the center point 
the center point is actually a, a building in Australia, in Sydney. You want to grab the center point and attach them two together. So take one of them out. And attach those together. And then we're just going to work our way around. And put a stitch marker in there. If you haven't got another many stitch markers on you, we can use this one around the other side. So after you've crocheted past that, move it around over this side. But I've got a stack of stitch markers for once next to me. So I'm just going to pop those in. If you've heard that noise in my videos before, and you're probably wondering what it is, it's a little glass dish. And when I drop things in it, that's that noise. Just in case you were wondering. You're probably not. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to pop this the right way. And just make sure, looking at it, that it looks like it's in the right spot. Like it, You don't want it sort of twisted, so you don't want this bit further back than that part that's further back. But looking at it, it looks pretty good. It looks like it's centered. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to just grab hold of our work. If we pop that hood back inside out, it's going to work easier. our crochet back on our crochet hook and we are going to half double crochet into the hood which is this section that's in front of us but then we're going to slip stitch into the main part of the basket so we're going to chain one and then slip stitch to the stitch that's behind on the main part of the basket which is here and then half double crochet into the next stitch and then looking up to the base of our bag the next available stitch is there see how this one's got a slip stitch coming out so we're going to go to that one Grab our yarn, pull it through, and work a slip stitch without going out of the camera. <laughs> Half double crochet in the next stitch that's the hood. And slip stitch, this is much easier to do when you have it on your lap. It's quite awkward, this joining method in front of a camera. So this one has already got a stitch coming out of it. So that one is our next available stitch. So Pull that through, pull snug, half double crochet in this bit, which is the hood. Go to our main part of our cradle, our bag, and do a slip stitch in the next available stitch. Pull snug, and then into the hood section, half double crochet. So we are basically half double crocheting in the hood and then slip stitching in the next available stitch on the main body of the bag. So this is the main cradle. I'm going to repeat this all the way around. Like I said, if you didn't have enough stitch markers, when you've got past this one, you can put this one around the other side. So continue on like this, and I'll meet you when we around the other side. I've just worked a half double crochet into the last stitch on my hood, and I'm just going to slip stitch in the next available stitch. So nothing different from what we've just been doing. And then I'm going to finish off. So I'm going to grab my scissors, cut the yarn. 
and then pull through. Oops. Just get rid of this one. Pretend that they're sewn in. <laughs> You're so cute. Oh my goodness, this is adorable. Okay, so we probably didn't need to cut our yarn off there. Actually, we didn't. So I'm going to put something across the screen so that you don't cut yours off. But if you're wondering why I've got two ends, that's because I got scissor happy and cut it off. So let's put them to the back. So your yarn will be joined somewhere in the corner here. I think it's this one. It doesn't really matter. Wherever you are, you want to do a chain. So... Oh, my brain it's got so many ideas it's crazy this was worked with the double crochet stitch you can see the base of the bag there and then that's the so this is half double crochet and then this is double crochet I'm actually wanting to try it with half double crochet on this green version to see what that looks like as well if you want to do the, the double crochet you're going to chain two if you want to do the half double crochet you're going to chain one And I have yarn ends everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Let's get them out of the way. Let's attach that in. And chain one for a half double crochet, chain two for a double crochet. And do your stitch into that same space. We're going to work around the hood which is there can you see this line I don't know if that's hopefully that's standing out on camera but it is the line of the slip stitches that we did when we attached our hood that's where we're going to be working into if you fold your hood down at the back there it sticks out a lot more and we're going to work our stitches into there for the first round we are going to work two stitches in each stitch around so back in that same stitch where we just did our half double crochet or your double crochet you're going to work another stitch so we've got our two half double crochets i've just had to refilm this but anyway and we got, i was just trying to work into the front loops but that did not work it was really hard to do so looking at our work you'll see the bumps just here we're going to work into there and we're supposed to be doing two stitches in each one accidentally miss a stitch like if you only do one instead of two it's not gonna matter and you'll see that it's starting to ruffle see it's starting to ruffle but that's what we want because this is how we make the little pretty frill and the reason it ruffles is because there's too many stitches so it can't lay flat 
So if you've had that problem with something else that you've been making and it's supposed to be flat, <laughs> that's what your problem is. There's too many stitches. I'm just keeping this going so that you can see exactly where I'm going, hopefully. It's quite hard to show you on camera. I've just finished going around my hood. You can see it just there. And now I'm just up to the sides of the bags and we are going to continue on working two half double crochets in each stitch. We're going to repeat this all the way around until we get back to the beginning. So pause the video and I'll meet you when we're over the other side. I am back to the beginning and you can see there's a split here so we need to join. This will create a seam when we join but trust me it is so roughly that you are not going to notice. <laughs> at all. There's ruffles for everyone. So we're going to chain one or chain two if you did the double crochet and now we are going to work a half double crochet in the same stitch and this round we're going to work an increase which is two half double crochets into every second stitch. So we've just done one and in the next one we want to work two half double crochets. I'm crocheting over my tail as I go so that will might be in the way so just bear with us. Uh, we're going to do one in the next one and then two in the next and that's our repeat for this round. Oops, a daisy, what's going on? So one half double crochet in the next and two in the next. And we're going to repeat this all the way around. It's going to look a bit weird until we add the next stage. <laughs> it's going to go all weird but that's how it works. So continue on and I'll meet you when we are ready to join which is just here. Once we get to the end of the round we are going to join with a slip stitch And now we are done with our increasing. Now it is just one stitch in each stitch around. If you've done a double crochet, you're going to chain two, half double crochet, chain one. And it is one stitch in every stitch around. And we're going to join the end of this round the same way. And what we want to do is continue on until the top part of our bag, so the, the wavy bit, the valance, which is what I would call it, the wavy part, we want this the same height as the sides of our cradle so that when it's folded down this edge here touches the table. You may need one more round than what we've got for the sides but you will know when you have done yours. If you're doing a double crochet stitch you're not going to need very many rounds at all but I've chosen half double crochet stitch just to see how it looks and so I'm not really sure how many I need. So continue on doing your rounds of just one stitch in every stitch around. Pause the video and I'll see you there. I've finished the sides of my bag. You can see it's all roughly and floppy but that's how it's supposed to look at the moment. And all together I have one, two, three, four, five, six rounds of crochet for the, the valance or the roughly part of my bag. What we need to do now is make a chain and I'm going to use some of the yellow yarn that I had just for a nice contrast. So we need to find the end and I'm sure you know how to make a chain so you start with your slip knot. Of course you know how to make a chain, we made one at the beginning. So basically what I would suggest is leaving that yarn end a bit longer so that when you thread your chain through the bag Apparently I've forgotten how to do a slip knot. When you thread the chain through the bag, you've got something to thread through your needle and it doesn't fall off your needle so much. I was just testing it before and I only had sort of like a short end and it kept coming out of the needle. So make it a bit longer and you can always trim it off later. So we're just going to make a chain. You're going to need quite a long chain actually. You can do as many as you like. What I do is just make a length and I keep my yarn attached and I thread it through the bag 
and if I need to make it longer or shorter I can always add more or just pull out some chains if I've got too many. So I'm just going to do some more off camera and then we'll show you how to thread it through your crochet. I have my chain I have no idea how many there are but I've just made a length and we're going to grab our bag and I would start at one end so this is the hood as you can see you've got your hood here I would start at one end I practiced before and I did it the second round of crochet that we just did so this is the valance or the roughly section so we're going to grab our yarn and needle And see how you've got a long piece of yarn now and it's easier to hold on to because when you pull it through you can accidentally just pull it out of the yarn needle. So going to what you think is the the end or the middle of the end and we're going to go every second uh, what would you call it the space between the stitches every second one so you've got in there you're skipping that one and going into the next one. You could do every third if you like, up to you. And then we're going to skip two stitches and go into this one. Skip two stitches, come out the space next to it. Just a little tip, um, if this, so this is your bag and these are the sides. This is actually the back of the crochet. If you flip it to the front of the crochet, it's much easier to see your stitches. See that? Well, I find it's easier to see your stitches so therefore it's easier to find the spaces you need to go into. So continue on until we get all the way back around to where we started. To determine how long you need your chain what you're going to do is just this is where we started threading and finished threading. Gosh <laughs> I've done something wrong there I will fix that in a minute and you're going to pull out enough to make a handle for the bag. So you're going, we are going to join those two together. So let's just pretend they're joined. And you're just going to pull until you can scrunch it up as much as you can. It won't scrunch up all the way because we've got so much crochet. And then decide that's how long you want your handles. I think that's just perfect size for a child. If you want them longer, go for it. Make them longer. What have I done here? I've got one poking out and one poking in and yes I am going to have some stitches that are way too many there but it does not matter now we want to finish off our chain and I have already cut my yarn off and what we're going to do is just make another chain and then pull it all the way through pulling out your yarn end and just pull that tight and now we just want to I'm just going to see if we can just tie this in a knot And just pull it together and you can sew in your ends if you would like but I am just going to trim these off so they're both the same length and you now have your handles for your bag so the way this bag works is you've got your handles so you've got your handles and you can hold your bag like that and you scrunch it up as far as you can so you just pull and scrunch and there we go you can put your little baby in there I did have a little crochet doll I don't know where he's gone crochet teddy bear that I don't know he's disappeared he was just here I don't know I could blame on the cat but I don't own one um, yeah so that's with the way it looks like a as a bag and then to flip it out and make it into the cradle you just turn it inside out just sort of fix it up there make your little hood stick up and you know if you want to get fussy you can organize that so it's perfect and make sure it's got all the scrunchy bits of course if you're doing this for a smaller child if you've got an older child they may just want to do it themselves 
So you might want to just scrunch it up a little bit there. Again, if this was mine, I would be fussing for ages. <laughs> Getting all the wrinkles, uh, sorry, the ruffles set perfect. Okay, let's not spend too much time on that because I will be here all day. <laughs> just flip that down at the back and again, you can just pull that tighter. You could just um, tuck your, you know, kids won't bother, but you could just tuck them up in there for them and that gets their handles out the way. And same on that side, just tuck them up in there. And it's ready for their doll or teddy or whatever they want to put in there. And you can make a blanket, you can make a little granny square. Uh, I think a granny square would be really cute. What's this piece of yarn here? Yeah, a granny square blanket would be super, super cute. If you don't know how to, make, how to make a granny square, I will put a video in for you. And you can go and check that out. I think this is so cute. This is going to be for my niece. And she's only two. She, she might play with it now. I don't know. She may not be old enough. But she has such a great imagination. Anyway, I could go on all day about my niece because she's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I'm not biased at all. <laughs> I would love to know what colour you have made your cradle purse. Please leave a photo on our Facebook group. I would love to check them out. If not, if you're not on Facebook, you can tag me on Instagram or you can just leave a comment down below. Let me know what colour you used and who you made it for. Are you making them for nieces, uh, nephews, daughters, sons, one for yourself? Or are you going to make these and sell them at markets? Just on that, you can sell anything that you've made from my patterns, the ones that are designed by me. There are a few video tutorials that are designed by other people, and I, the, the pattern is the written pattern is de designed by other people, but the actual video tutorial obviously is mine. Uh, you may need to get permission from them, but anything that is my own design, and you'll know that because I won't mention any other designer in the tutorial. You are most welcome to sell anything that you make. And let me know, do you have an item already that you make and sell at markets that I have designed? I would love to know. What is your most popular thing that you sell? See, look, I'm fixing the ruffles so it looks good. <laughs> oh dear. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time, happy crochet.